Hello and welcome back to the Brain Boost channel. So today we're going to be talking about food chains. So let's just jump right in. So different types of food chains that we're going to be looking at today are the bottom up, which you'll see is controlled by resources, the food web, and the top down or predator controlled food chain. So let's just dive right into all of these. So the bottom up food chain. Basically, what this is, is that it is based on resource availability. So everything starts with the bottom down here. The, the main, the original or the primary um, source of food, which is, could be a plant um, for most animals. So it starts with this quote unquote plant. And um, basically this is going to serve as our primary producer. Our primary consumer is going to eat that plant and the primary consumer is then going to be eaten by a secondary consumer, um, a tertiary consumer, and a quaternary consumer, and so on and so forth. It just keeps going up the chain, but it starts with the primary producer. This primary producer, uh, in this case if it's the plant that we're talking about, um, is going to dictate what happens higher up this chain. If this is limited, it's going to affect everything else up here. So that's why it's called bottom up. It starts from the bottom and it works upwards. Um, this is also why it's called the resources, the based on resource availability, because it starts with a primary producer. Okay, so the next example that we're going to look at is the food web. So the bottom up example that we just looked at is not necessarily as universally representative. Actually, this food web idea is more representative of the dynamics that we see. Um, so we're going to look at this aquatic food web as an example, and this is obviously an oversimplified image. There are way more species in the aquatic environment, so just imagine a bunch more arrows and a bunch more uh, animals around here. But we'll just work with this for now. So basically um you know the plankton is fed on by the krill and the penguin who is fed on by the seal um who also feeds on the squid and you know the squid is also fed on by the penguin they're all interconnected and this also brings forth something called the energetic hypothesis so what we're looking at here actually based on this energetic hypothesis Technically, there is a maximum number of individuals in a chain that if you were to follow, you would see, like, for example, seven individuals because of the idea of energy transfer between each level of trophism. So that sounds a little bit of a, like a loaded statement. So once again, I said, imagine there's a bunch of different arrows and a bunch more animals. This is a way bigger like spectrum of animals than what we see here but if you were to follow kind of one part of the web you'd follow up and it would lead you to at some point it would kind of almost lead you to like a dead end as you can see here like it would take you somewhere there um and that's kind of for example our final destination let's look at the blue whale okay or let's look at an imaginary shark that is not depicted here. Um, and let's assume that there's a, a few more um, intermediate players before we get to the shark. Before we get to this imaginary shark. So between each trophic level that we're looking at here, there is very poor energy transfer. Okay? Yeah, sure, the krill eats the plankton and the squid eats the krill. But the amount of energy that is transferred from this to this to this to the next to the next to the shark, it takes a lot of energy to actually, you know, form our shark, to feed our shark. So, um, which is why it takes a number of individuals in a chain that you were to follow to this imaginary shark. It, you need a, a bunch of individuals actually to get to this shark because of the energy, the energetics that are being transferred. So, basically, when we're looking from one trophic level to another, 10% of the energy that is stored in, like, organic matter at the plankton, then at the krill, then at the squid, then at the next one, next one, up till we get to the shark, 
um it's it's converted into obviously organic matter into the next step so we have 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent it goes up like that um because there's a lot of energy by these um animals that are used for other things obviously um it's not just you feed on like a little bit of plankton and you're gonna end up getting to the shark in three individuals you're not gonna go from plankton krill squid shark you, it might take a couple more individuals because the shark needs a lot of energy. So this is going to limit our um, the length of our chain, if you will. The length of the chain that you follow, because we're looking at a web, obviously. The whole thing is a web, but we're zoning in on a particular chain that we're going working up in. Does that make sense? So... You can't lower the number of individuals that take part in this quote-unquote chain that you're following because if you're getting 10% of energy transferred at each stage, you need a certain amount before you get to this metaphorical shark. You can't have like plankton, krill, shark. It won't go that way because it takes a lot of energy to produce this shark, if that makes sense, to feed this shark. So the next um, example of food chain that we're going to look at is the top down. So the bottom up we said was controlled by resources. Top down is controlled by predation. So what that means is we have a the top feeder at the top and they're going to be dictating what this food chain looks like. Okay, so basically if we have... For example, we're going to look at this. This is a before and after, which I will explain what is going on here. But let's just start with the left side. Cod and large predators. That's what we start with. And this big circle implies that we have a lot of it. Okay, there's plenty of cod and large predators roaming around the aquatic environment. We go down the chain. They prey on smaller fishes, crab and shrimp. Shrimp goes and looks for zooplankton, which feeds on phytoplankton, which feeds on nitrate. That's kind of like the main, the very bottom resource. Um, but it doesn't matter, like in bottom up. This is not going to affect up here. It's going to work bot uh, top down here. So let's say, for example, cod and large predators. So there's a bunch of cod, and let's say... Uh, in a particular area, it is overfished. So there's not that much cod and large predators anymore. People have fished them all out. So before we had a lot of cod, now we do not. If we don't have enough cod and large predators, then they're not going to feed that much on the smaller fish, crab, and shrimp. So there's going to be more of them. And because there are more of them, they're going to feed a lot on zooplankton. So we're going to see less zooplankton than we did originally. And because there's not that much zooplankton, they can't feed on phytoplankton that much. So there's going to be more of it, which is why the circle is bigger. And because there's so much phytoplankton, they're going to eat up all the nitrate. They're going to take it all up. So that's why we have a little bit here. So this is kind of showing us how this food chain is controlled by predation. If you mess up, the, if you mess with the top, it's going to affect the bottom. So that is it for today's video. Be sure to like this video and uh, leave a comment if you have any other questions based on this topic. Uh, also, leave any comments of other video ideas that you'd like to see from Brain Boost. And make sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos weekly.